in May in Lexington, Kentucky, Ohio softball's season ended where every team hopes to be, the NCAA tournament. It was the first trip to the Diamond Dance since 1995 after a historic championship run for the Mid-American Conference Tournament. The title and the trip to the field of 64 fuels momentum for the 2015 season for head coach Jody Hermanick and the Bobcats. The success that we had last year, it, it means everything to our program. It wasn't just something that happened by coincidence. I have been waiting a long time for people of this caliber to join our program. For this season, having the success we did last year, it's, it's making sure that, um, you know, that everybody continues to excel under that expectation that you're here for this reason and you know that you're capable of winning these games. So have fun doing it and get there again. Last season is now in the rear view, so focus was placed on winter camp. The core of the team remains, but all of the assistant coaches are different. It has been one of the most favorite coaching dynamics that I've had, and I've had some good ones. I've had some really good coaching dynamics with two of my best friends as former assistants before um, and the way we worked together, and now having Coach Mack here and, and Coach Jay and Alyssa here. Um, it has been one of the most positive, the most um, connected, the most on the same page, and fun environments to coach in. I started off in college coaching with um, University of Virginia, Stephen F. Austin, and Trinity University. And then I went into high school coaching and teaching for several, several years, and then I decided to come back to college coaching. I was getting ready for work, and Coach Herm called me, and I was looking at my phone, I was like, oh no, Coach Herm's calling. And she presented the opportunity to me, and I would be dumb if I didn't come back. That was my biggest concern when I was coming back. I told Herm, I was like, I do not want this to be a strange transition. I don't want it to be any awkward. Um, if I'm gonna come back, I want it to do it so that I can help out those players. And this transition was so smooth. Like, I, I can't say enough about how much they respected me as soon as I came back. And it was an, an easy transition for me to be able to still connect with them, but also um, reach them on um, a coaching level where they could respect what I had to say and we could work each day. It's really a, a testament to um, Ohio University drawing such great magnitude of people here, but it's also such an, a, an amazing opportunity for these girls to have the opportunity to learn from two former student athletes that played here, um, and then a person of Coach Mack's um, resume and level of play, but also her demeanor in which she approaches things. I am a player's coach, so I like to make sure I have a relationship built with each player um, and understand how each particular player ticks, um, what motivates them, how can I encourage them, and but also have um, a level of respect as well. So, but I feel like it's important to have um, an equal like player's coach relationship. You guys are insane. Welcome back 2015, totally excited about all of this stuff, totally excited about the work that I heard, that I read, that I um, was infused that you guys put out over December break. No matter what format we put in front of you today, no, no matter what format the day one of the camp, whether it's downtime and getting connected, whether it's a hard, rigorous task, no matter what it is, I have the belief that you will sustain it with focus, with mental endurance, with the purpose of getting 1% better and as a unit. Your effort, your focus, your individuality is all about the team this week. We ask a lot of you, we're gonna ask a lot of you, we're gonna demand a lot of you. Sites will meet you out on the court and let's get after it, let's go. Before they can get back on the field, the players must pass the fit test. That's expected, it happens every year. But this year, the test was different. The fit test 
was me knowing that if I know what I'm going to be tested at, I'm going to go home and I'm going to train for it to be my fastest that I can be. So my vision was create something different. Coach Sites did an awesome job putting that together, and it was very challenging. And so I wanted them to understand that, you know, they're good. They're very good at what they do. And you could see in the first time that many of them did it that it was a challenge for them because they weren't expecting it. It was all mental because my body was used to training for the other one, but my mind just had to adapt to the new workouts and what we had to do for the test. I did panic a little bit, but Honestly, I was just kind of thinking, well, all you have to do is what? Six minutes of your life, six minutes of your life to go hard. I was invited the opportunity to do it before we did it, before we executed on the girls. And I just appointed Alyssa to be that one because <laughs> Alyssa is good at that. So we were sitting around in the office and Coach was like, so what's the connection gonna be between the time that they took in the fall there? And she was like, Alyssa, you're gonna run this. And I was like, what? Like, how did I just get into that? And she's like, you like this stuff? And I was like, I know, I was like, it's fine. At the end of it, I felt like I couldn't walk. Great, we're starting 14 minutes. Together we're better, one, two, three. Together we're better. Matt, you run like a gazelle, babe. So let's make everything happen the way we want it to be in control of it. Here we go. Go to work, one, two, three. Go to work. But you're going to be in a squat, OK? So then you're going to toss me the ball and I'm going to work the transfer and throw it back. When you're doing it from one, you're going to lift and pause on this back leg. Okay, so then you're going to lift and go. The first practice, the anticipation that you get for it is just kind of electric. You know, you, you just know that they're like ready and, and um, excited and just the energy to get out there and, and be pushed. Visualize your target back there. You got that plate, look through that garage, what's your target? We're not throwing it to the upper deck. We need to make sure we're all going 150% after a ball, full speed, until we hear the communication tell us otherwise. That is your ball. Communication is key for any successful team, and it all starts with the person throwing and the person catching. That's one of the things that we're really going to pride ourselves on this year is the number of returning starters that we have, which just gives them the, the upper hand of me meshing together and gelling together, especially with my catchers calling their own game. Um, the pitchers are just one more year of experience, 50-something games more of experience of knowing um, what my catcher is looking for, um, pitchers and catchers working together. Um, that just really sets the tone, that's the vibe. Ohio's pitching attack brings back two second-team All-Max selections. 
Lauren McClary and Savannah Jo Dorsey, who combined for 31 wins and 392 strikeouts in 2014. You know, both have the opportunity to, to be great one-twos for us to carry seven innings and, and get us some wins um, and take the pressure off the other so that they can keep each other fresh. You know, we're constantly communicating whether Savvy's pitching, I'm pitching, Kaylin's pitching, whoever it is, there's always that communication because when you're the one pitching on the mound, you may not ever realize or are aware of some things that you're doing because you're just trying to play the game. I throw to Madison in a game usually and um, there's a lot of looks that are exchanged, like either <laughs> we look and she, like, it's like we vibe together so I can tell, you know, we both know where the, what we're expecting the pitch to do and what it does. and. We can communicate like through looks and sometimes she'll come out to the mound and talk to me. Madison is like, what's good for me when I don't know what's good for me? As a freshman, Madison Clater played in all 58 games. She had 53 hits and a 275 average. For her sophomore season, she's working on finding her voice with the upperclassmen. I want to be more of the vocal person behind the plate than I, than I was last year, as well as just continuing to work on um, just the other aspects of both the offensive and defensive game. So just, but the main thing will probably be communication and just having a presence behind the plate, making sure I'm able to communicate with um, everyone on the field. With Madison, she's good because she knows each batter and she knows her tendencies. At, at least after the first inning, she gets to see what they're about. Um, so she, I think she does a good job at calling pitches for each batter, so we kind of take it as one batter at a time, one pitch at a time. As a catcher, what we want from our catchers is to be the field general, and I put so much responsibility into Madison because I have so much faith in her, of the game that she calls, and the way that she can manage with her pitchers. She does a great job of being calm, cool, collected, a little bit um, hilarious at times, at the appropriate times, so that her pitchers are channeled in, um, in the middle of an at-bat. After a long two days of practice, Coach Hermanic hosts a different kind of holiday get-together at her home. Every um, fall, uh, we have a thanks dinner. It's a Thanksgiving, Christmas, and Hanukkah dinner all conglomerated into one. This last year, with our schedules and everything that we had going on, we didn't have an opportunity to have our thanks dinner, um, which, you know, it's a good time for us to come together, share some dinner that um, all the girls make different things to, and then the girls do their secret Santas. This year, we had to schedule it for when we got back. And so we added, since there was a holiday that took place, we added the new year aspect. So the new Thanksgiving year dinner, um, it's just a fun time to get the girls out of the softball uniform and into just a real life kind of an environment. I mean, that's the cool thing. You, you go to coach's house, you, you know, kick it in the offices, you know, every day kids are dropping by, you know, tapping you on the shoulder and walking the other way. and. You know, there's uh, sugar cookies showing up on my desk. <laughs> it's like Christmas all the time. It's really fun to when the team all gets together because there's so many different types of personalities going on. Oh, it's so much fun. And just to be in a stress-free environment and to see kind of like the fun and creative, thoughtful gifts that people come up for each other. You know, we really, um, like I said, we're a family. <laughs> I actually feel I have the strongest relationship with Coach Herm this year especially than I have in the past. Like, I feel like I can go to her for anything and I know that she's going to listen to me and she respects my opinion. She's not afraid to tell me if you know she thinks otherwise or maybe I need to change my perspective a little bit. I would say she's kind of like my mom in a way. Through the course of the years, it's just been one thing after another that she would help me with. I feel like her being so open and all about family makes us um, respect her in a whole nother way. So we respect her as a coach um, on the field and off the field, but off the field we can have that kind of like mother figure in our life um, to know that we can come to her and, and we're welcome even at her house. I always tell my assistant coaches that the once these athletes graduate, 
and you get those letters of thank yous, and you get those um, emails of appreciation, and you get those notes or them coming back to campus, just embracing you with um, the, the things that they're, they have gratitude towards, um, that's, that's what I live for. Finally, it's time for the first full squad scrimmage. It's an opportunity to put everything they've learned thus far to the test and to get out there and play the game they love. To, to go live against each other because it prepares us for our future at-bats that we're going to get. Then just watching the girls compete against each other, it takes it to a different level. focus was clearly on us in control of our own body language and us in control of our own mental game. So you guys are doing a lot of the little things outside of the throwing the ball, the pitching the ball, the hitting the ball, the fielding the ball really, really well. So be proud of that because that allowed you to compete every single time. WCWS, yeah? One, two, three, WCWS! With the dawn of a new season just days away, every pitch, every swing, and every catch carries more significance signifying potential and excitement for Ohio softball 2015. This is the moment we wait for. We go through all fall, we see how we play together. We're stoked, we're ready to go. We're counting down the days like we have been for months. They're trained well, they're prepared well, and then bam, let them out of the gates. You know, you don't want to keep a bull in the chute for too long, because pretty, pretty soon, the geared up anticipation is just going to stand there and get stale, and then you're poking them to get out. They, you know, are really excited to, to get the cleats on and hit the dirt for the first time. But those, those the practices, um, the way that we've leveled the practices in preparation, um, I'm just really excited to watch them perform.